Immediately after a disaster, phones are to be used only for life-threatening emergencies. Beyond that, maintaining communication with employees is crucial. You realize all the communication you've counted on for the past several years is no longer available. None of the phones worked, which was a surprise to us. We always thought once we got out of the building, the cell phones would be available. We wouldn't have our landlines, of course, but we all had cell phones. Uh, we all had Nextel repeaters even with two-way function, and none of those worked because they all run through cell sites. So our learning was invest in some simple two-way walkie-talkies that just send signals to each other. In case phones don't work and you're trying to communicate with other branches, have designated people meet at a pre-arranged location. The fundamental concept for our emergency operations centers is initially to have no reliance on any technology. We have a, a set of things which rely on runners, people actually going, seeing what's going on. Or in the event that some long distance phone lines may work, have a contact person or company outside the state that all your offices can get in touch with. Set up an emergency out of state message line so you can update employees on what's happening. This can help relieve anxiety and a sense of isolation in the days and weeks following a disaster. Starbucks set up a big tent where they brought in groups of several hundred employees at a time to tell them about the damage to the building and when they would be in operation again. And I think it really helped a lot of people get over the fact that they might be anxious about going back to the site of an event. Protecting your assets, your physical resources, comes next. A key lesson from the Nisqually earthquake is that retrofitting your facility and securing its contents can be extremely effective. If you came after the earthquake and looked at some of these, the paint was actually blistering off these plates. And the reason it blistered is because these braces move and create friction here that heated up the plates and it was the heat that made the paint blister. So when the structural engineers came back and looked through, they saw the blistering paint. They said, great, these things did just what they were supposed to do. They funneled all the energy right down to these plates and the paint blistered and that told us they worked just like they were supposed to. This would be a, a, a hollow clay tile. This would be unreinforced masonry structure. This would be quite vulnerable to earthquake damage. Consider having your building evaluated by a professional engineer to help identify potential hazards. Keep in mind that an ideal time to make improvements is during a major addition or renovation. Even if you don't own the building, talk to your owner about upgrades and access to your facility following a disaster. You may have, uh, have a structure that you think is designed to meet the current building codes, but you've got to be rem remember that the building codes just prevent the building from collapsing. If you need that building to stay in business after the earthquake, you want to talk to your engineers to how do I improve this building so it meets my performance objective in, in keeping the company going.